Hello, I'm Malcolm Hartlett. And I'm Janice Baker. <laughs> Our special... We're laughing, we should explain, because we said, let's just say I'm Malcolm and, and I'm, I'm Janice. Janice. And he and went... I just did the whole thing, as usual. <laughs> Our special guest on this week's episode is Adelaide Law Mayor Sandy Vershaw. Next on Our Time. That's right. Now, my voice hasn't come back properly down there. I can talk up here if you'd like. But <laughs> no, I, don't think, I really, don't think so. It's probably not the right sort of image. No, that's your pantomime voice. It is my alone. Mrs. Talklot pantomime voice. And, you know, somebody who was instrumental... I'll go down now. Somebody who was instrumental in it's that... not much different. So. No, but someone who was instrumental in that voice, believe it or not, is the current Lord Mayor of Adelaide, our first and only guest on this program, <laughs> Sandy Vershaw. Hello. Or the Hi. right Welcome. honourable well, or the left honourable. Did she really want to be, be known as that? I'd honourable? like to know how I'm responsible yes. for that voice. Well, because <laughs> you helped promote the very first time we did a panto yeah. that Mrs Talkalot appeared in. Oh, of course. Of oh, course. my yeah, goodness. Yeah, there way you back go. in the day. So it's your fault. Blame you. <laughs> that was I think fun. I'm going to have to talk halfway between this husky voice and a funny high voice. It hasn't cut much better. This has been going on for weeks. It has. I couldn't talk up there before. Oh, I'm doing well. People that Sandy, are Sandy, let's talk about you. <laughs> um, an interesting fact that I just found out, because I didn't know this about you, that you are um, a first-generation Australian of Dutch, French, Portuguese and Selenese descent. Yes. How did you get such a mixture? It's, uh, well, Dad was from uh, Rotterdam and, uh, and his, his descent is both Dutch and French. And Mum was a Dutch burger from Ceylon, which is now Sri Lanka. And oh, so course, her grandfather on one side was French, her grandmother on the other side was Portuguese, her father was Dutch, and, um, and somewhere in there, we haven't quite worked it out, um, is, uh, is some Selenese. So it's a so lot of and, <laughs> and I was the first firstborn. Of course, my elder sister was born in Holland. So mum and dad right. met in Perth, actually, married in Melbourne. You know, worked for a few years, went back to Holland, had my sister, and then came to Australia, and uh, and I was born. But isn't there that the go. perfect story for an Australian citizen? Yeah, yeah. That there's, really is. There's the lots of migration stories. Melting yeah. pot all in one yeah, family. absolutely. Yeah. So you should be very healthy and be a Lord Mayor for a long time. <laughs> 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 so let's go back to the beginning of your life. Did you oh, feel God. that you, <laughs> as a child, had an interest in public life? Um, I don't think so. You were just a happy, carefree I don't think so. I, I certainly... Um, was a performer. I was the I was the family comedian actually, and I I took I um, used to copy Jerry Lewis at every opportunity. Oh, now I don't tell many people that, so you know. That's <laughs> good. But um, yeah, so I was I was I wasn't a class clown because I was very I was quite quiet at school. But mm. um, in my own safe space, I used my family thought I was hysterical. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I think they were laughing with me. I hope they weren't laughing at me, but yes. Well, it can be good both ways Jerry sometimes. Lewis. But isn't that, it, that's interesting you should say that because a lot of shy people are actually quite outgoing at other mm. times. It's yeah. like that's, that's if their... If you're in the right position. Yeah, well, that's, that's right. also, as Mel was saying, I did, you know, mum... Uh, encourage us all to dance, and I love dancing. So, sing, you know, song and dance, mm. and I would lead a troupe quite happily. But you know, it, it's an interesting thing when, you, and I am an introvert. When you are of that sort of introversion persuasion, I'd rather host a party than be a guest. But I'm oh, quite comfortable being truth. out the front of a troupe of dancers or giving a speech yeah. or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And so it's this sort of odd. Thing that no, you are I managed think that's to do. very mm. common, Sandy, to yeah. most of us. You know, we're quiet in our private life but can mm. get up in front of an audience and do daft yeah. stuff. Yeah. But privately, we're really yeah. quiet. So I, I, I never some... leave home apart from coming to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I do threaten my kids that I'll do a stand-up comedy segment in, at the Fringe one year, but they're just they're terrified I'm actually going to do oh, that. Oh, you should. You should. I've got the theatre Because it would be all perfect. about them. <laughs> I've got the theatre. Now, but from being the class or the, the family comic, how did you get into the workforce? I think this is just interesting because, 
you know, there's no particular route to become a Lord Mayor. No, oh, God no. And you have no. had a variety of oh, things, haven't huge. you, leading up to this? Um, I think, you know, because my, my history reads as if I'm about 150, mm -hmm. but um, I think I've always gone for what is the thing I'd like to try next. So it's, it's not sort of the bright new spangly thing, it's like what's the experience that I'd like to have and I would often challenge myself so I'd step into different spaces so i go okay well that's good, I'd be really interested to see what that's like and sure. then I'd step into a different, well, a different career or a different What industry. about you've been an entrepreneur, you've been a shopping mall manager, yep. you've had various positions in public life like WOMAD Windmill Theatre, mm -hmm. uh, Adelaide Festival of Arts, Fringe. Yep. Um, it makes you sort of think, did you keep getting fired from the <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. no they're all in the, the same field. They're, yeah, they're, each like, one is another step in a way. Yeah, and it? it's something I actually try and tell my kids as well. It's like, to me, it's you fill your bucket with your experiences and your skills and sometimes they all come together. Interesting enough, when I went to the Festival of Arts the first time as the marketing director, um, I had worked in hospitality, running restaurants, and I'd worked in shopping centres and I'd worked in all these different things in the media and um, in advertising and when I got there it felt like they all came together yeah. um, in terms of what my role was. Um, and I was in my mid-30s then and that yes. was like, oh, this, I, I get it. I, I can pull on all of those things mm. that I've learned. Mm. Um, and then I pretty much stayed around arts and culture for the next 10, 15 years. Um, and because, you know, it's like you find your tribe and I, I, mm. I love being around creative people. I love people who are willing to give something a go, knowing that they won't always succeed. Mm. Uh, and everybody comes in behind us and it's very intense when you work in festivals and things like that. Mm. So everybody has to look after everybody else and it's, uh, uh, it's, it's unique to anything I've ever done. Did, did you see yourself as a facilitator or as an instigator? Uh, both, actually. So, uh, both. And I was allowed to do both. So, um, in the various roles that I've had. Mm. I mean, when um, Christy and I took on the Fringe uh, to take it annual, so I was the CEO and Christy Anthony was the um, director, um, you know, we were given, I think, six months, maybe seven months to go annual. And we had three staff. So it, that was, yes, a, it's grown that was a pretty mammoth sort of undertaking yeah. and it was very successful and we did four years together and um, uh, set it on uh, quite, quite a successful path and Greg Clark and Heather have added their own personalities to it and it's just continued to to boom. And But, you know, our role was to both come up with ideas and try and put in new initiatives and things like that as well as support all the artists that were trying to make a living mm. and and, uh, and get their product out there. So it was great yeah, so fun. I love it. So do you, did you feel that one position led to the next or was it just, I'll just go sideways here? I guess would the opportunities have just come along, though, in the position that you were in, there, as you say, every, all that experience that you had, it was like gathering together. Yeah. But then those opportunities would come from that? Well, it's also... You know, if you open the door just a crack, mm. <laughs> generally they come. So, so mm. when I when I'd done the four years at the Fringe, I actually decided to have a year off. I was just going to go and write my book and you know have a year off and travel. We don't and know do about things. the book. We'll find out about and, that. Uh, <laughs> which I did actually do. But um, and I lasted three months. Uh, I spent the first months with my kids just doing everything, being everything, cleaning up, you know, doing the tax, whatever yeah, we needed to do. <laughs> then we travelled for about six weeks, um, went went to Sri Lanka for the first time wow. and spent six weeks over there, which was amazing because I wanted to see... Did you feel a connection? Uh, not necessarily, but I actually understood my mother a lot more because, okay. you know, the um, just in terms of what her lifestyle must have been and, yeah. you know, it's such a such a rich and, and um, green, beautiful, beautiful place. It's like, you know, when my, my mother had Alzheimer's and mum died several years ago now, but, um, you know, even when she was in the home, I used to take fresh mango and things into her because oh. they were the, you know, pawpaw and mango, yes. I think, were the fruits of her childhood. So, yeah, that she would remember. Um, yeah, I mean, she came out quite young. She was 16 when she came to Australia. But um, so... And, and then I was offered a contract, which was in local government at the city council, and I thought, oh, well, I haven't done that before. 
Oh. I'll give that a crack. And yeah. I thought, oh, it's, you know, three-month contract. And I did about five... I think I was there for five months and absolutely loved it. Um, what is it you like about it? Uh, well, that one I went in to set up a new program called Vibrant Adelaide and uh, I was outside the council sort of looked like this huge lumbering beast, you know, that sort of like takes forever to do anything and you go inside and there's just... It's full of amazing people. I just met such mm. passionate and invested and committed people and I thought... And they were great and we yeah. got so much done and I, I really enjoyed it. I went away and that's, I think, the last time you saw me. Mm. I was producing the Festival of Ideas, so mm. I went and produced the Festival of Ideas um, with Greg Mackey and then I went back as a general manager for three years and, again, absolutely loved it. Mm. So, um, great is experience. It, is it the thrill of... The new, is it yeah. the, what is it that gets you, do you think? Uh, Starting something from the, the ground? The challenge, the challenge I, of I like it all. to challenge myself. I like to put myself in a space that, that doesn't terrify me but makes me go, uh <laughs> And because uh, I actually, you know what it is? It's from early days. You know when you're about to go on stage mm. and those nerves? Yeah. I interpret nerves as excitement. Yeah. So yeah. when I get nerve and a nervous tummy, something really exciting is about to happen or something good because, you know, stage work I loved. So, yeah, yeah. And, and I think that, so when I put myself in those situations where my, you know, where I've got... The, the adrenaline's going. Yeah, <laughs> I, I go, well, OK, I'm putting myself in a place that's that is going to be great. Well, so. certainly that's the place that you find yourself in now and we're going to take a short break and be back with Sandy, the Lord Mayor of Adelaide, in just a tick. We keep calling you Sandy, but I think as a, the Lord Mayor, you should be Sandra. <laughs> Sandra, the right Sandra. honourable Lord Mayor of Adelaide. <laughs> Doesn't see you. <laughs> Sandy Virtual. Sandy, um, so this challenge of becoming a Lord Mayor, you sort of had a sample of that, I guess, by being uh, in the position before being the Lord Mayor. Uh, well, I was a councillor for three years yeah. and um, and I had the privilege of being Martin Hayes' deputy for the 16 months before the election. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, so, and Martin was fantastic when I was going, both personally and professionally, when I was going through the election. He was it's, great it's on this program. It's pretty intense. Yeah, but he was so, great when we interviewed him. Yeah. Um, he opened the door to really the way he was seeing Adelaide because of being a trader within the city. Yep, absolutely. And that just made perfect sense, yeah. you know. That's the right person yeah. sort of to be in that position. Yeah. And you've been in the city for a long time yeah. doing everything. Not quite forever, but a long yeah. time. <laughs> no, but well, it is, you know, and I, I, was, I was trying to explain to someone just in the... And Martin and I have had these conversations, so... Um, and because, to me, it's always been... Even all the festivals and everything that I've done, it's what is the experience I want something, someone to have. So in this position, as Lord Mayor, what is the experience of someone who lives in the city or has a business in the city or comes to the city as a visitor or a student? Um, and so that is the lens through which I'm always looking at things and how do I layer that up to make it the best experience they can have mm. and what is unique about Adelaide and where are we in a space that is authentic that you're going to get an experience here that you won't get, that's not sort of the same somewhere else. Mm. So it's different, yeah. different. What's yeah. different about us? Yeah. And I also love Adelaide, so it makes it easy. Oh, we do too, don't we? Yes, you know? absolutely. That's why we live here. Exactly. But, you know, if you're living in Perth or if you're living in Melbourne, where this program also goes, we're all very proud of our cities and we're proud of what we're trying to achieve. Mm. Um, but there is a point of difference, just mentioning those three capital cities, there's a point of difference that makes Perth unique, us unique, Melbourne unique, mm. and it's that uniqueness that makes us interesting places to visit. Yeah, absolutely. And interesting places to live, of mm. course, if you're here. Does it frustrate you, though, that people still call Adelaide the city of churches? I actually haven't heard that a while. Oh. I think that's that's a, probably an East Coast thing. It is very mm. much, I think, And, yeah. you know, anybody that still calls it that... We are a city of churches. We've got 43 churches in the city of Adelaide. Yes, but, but I would anybody think... that calls us that hasn't been here for a no, while. No, oh, I love more... those statistics. How many more of those can you get? <laughs> How many would you like? <laughs> <laughs> that's knowing your city well. But we are more so the city of uh, festivals, really, these days. I think days. so. Uh, we are absolutely... You know, we used to have the 
number plate, the festival stage. Yeah. Well, to me, we always have been. Yeah. And uh, so many of the festivals have started here and grown here. And, you know, I mean, the Fringe is the second biggest in the world. Yeah. Our festival season is extraordinary. But it does actually go the full calendar year now. So yes. we're about to yes. go into Tasting Australia and then into Cabaret Festival. That's right. And uh, So it's a, not just Mad know, March anymore. No, it just no, keeps right going. Through the year. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, well, which well, I love, which is what I love. It's a very accessible city. I think that's that's yeah. the difference. Yeah. Have you been able to work out how to turn the tram the right <laughs> way? And well, I would... No. <laughs> I, that, I actually government? would encourage people to actually walk. It is one of the most walkable cities in of the course. world. Of course. It's flat. And, well, it's flat and it's easy Helpful. to get anywhere, so... Mm. Um, but, you know, the tram is... The tram is good fun every night. I hop in the tram too sometimes. Mm. So, yeah. I do. I, I'm amazed being a car driver all my life. It's now a lot easier to hop on a tram to get in and out of the yeah, city. Yeah, absolutely. And I do that quite a lot. But, you know, if, if you're in Melbourne, you're so used to having trams buzzing around mm. the place. But we're not here in Adelaide. But sadly, we lost them all. It's a you shame know, that we know. did lose those yeah. old trams because yeah, they're is. part of our yeah. history. Is that something that people are talking about now, that... The, the pity that we lost a lot of our past, our heritage? Um, I think when they first put the tram network in... Not just the people trams, People were saying, though. oh, you know, that's a shame. Yeah. yeah, not just the trams, but um, in the buildings and so on, the preservation that we now seem to be very conscious of yeah. is becoming more and more important for the look of a city. Well, we've got extraordinary heritage buildings yeah, we have. Um, and uh, actually it's one, one of the things that I've been working with the teams is how do we how do we sort of amplify our um, heritage in terms of tourism because there's a lot of um, heritage and cultural tourism of course um, cities like Penang um, or Georgetown in Penang and um, and even Glasgow now has has got an incredible collection of Victorian architecture we, we've got Fabulous architecture. Mm. And just recently we had the Director of Culture from, from Edinburgh here on an exchange for a couple of weeks. And she came she said, Sandy, oh, my God, why didn't you tell me about this street with all the Art Deco buildings? And I'm going, which Where? street? What street is <laughs> that? And she's got her phone out and I'm going, oh, that's, um, that's the Exeter Hotel. And that's like, and, and she'd walk down Rundle Street oh. and take, because you know how we, we walk like this? Yes. Yeah. We don't look up. Yeah. And she'd, well, she'd just taken all of these extraordinary photos and of all of these Art Deco buildings that are in that street. And I thought, right, OK, I need to look up a little <laughs> bit more. Yeah. Um, but she thought it was astonishing. Well, again, it is the yeah. preservation of those things. Yeah. We lost a lot of our theatres, for example. Absolutely. And it's a real shame they don't exist anymore. Um, so what what do you what do you have sort of goals? Are you looking for ten points that I want to achieve while I'm Lord Mayor? Um, probably not as 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 strict as that. But I did actually uh, I was very clear through the election as to what I wanted to achieve, and so which was about growing business and about strengthening communities and also about creating a really dynamic culture. And so the work that I did when I was a general manager before and actually all the work I've done in festivals and things like that has all been around, you know, dynamic year-long cultures. But um, So we did things like changing the licensing, so small bars licensing and closing yeah. of streets and mobile food vans and all of those sorts of things. And so... Um, so, and if you can grow your businesses, because we've got 5,000 small businesses in the city of Adelaide and 150,000 in the state, so it really is the backbone of yeah. our economy here. Yep. And so it's how do you make it easy for people to open a business, try a new idea, um, how do you get them to grow? And, of course, that story with it brings jobs and with that brings more people into the city. Mm. We, if we grow residential equally, the businesses are all going to do better. And the third part of that little wheel is if you want people to have a reason and to actually open a business or work in a business or live in the city, you actually have to give them an experience that they want to have. Mm. And so we have got an amazing food and wine culture. Mm. We have got incredible creative industries. Uh, we've got festivals and events all through the year. We've got 732 hect hectares of parklands and we are the only city in the world that is surrounded by surrounded, park, yeah. right? And we just don't use it. We it, don't use that enough. No, and we don't. it is extraordinary. Yes. And so but I think you know, the more we mm. get apartments within that city block, the more they'll need to use it. Yeah. Well, I it's suppose. the biggest backyard you're ever going oh, to have, of course, isn't it? Exactly and of course right. we've got the five squares. So yes. you're not very far. It doesn't matter where you are. No. You are very connected to green space yeah. in our city. And so we, we work on that a lot. I was talking about things that terrify me. 
We are also the city, the only city in the world, I think, that's got a golf course right in the middle of the city. Yes. And <laughs> on Friday, I am terrified. I have to tee off for the Lord Mayor's golf day. And okay. I don't play golf. Yeah. But so I was out Four. there. I was out there with my I nearly hit Four. someone actually. I was out there with my husband and I go, I've got to have a couple of lessons because I've got to have to tee off. <laughs> and uh, I feel quite sick about it actually. Oh, and no. um, and I turned around and I looked back over the city and I went, oh my God, that is extraordinary. Isn't I beautiful? now want to play golf. Well, not just because to look I want to play golf. View. It's just it it is, is, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Listen, if you're a fan of Jerry Lewis, <laughs> you have to do all that <laughs> and then all that. Um, putting, yeah, carry yeah. on, or whatever it's called. I don't play golf either. I could see you doing that, but you have to wear the cap. Ah, uh, yes. Well, and the plus fours. Friday. And the plus fours. Yeah, fours. yeah, I did actually joke and say it oh, like that on a Friday. Can't wait for that. Oh, <laughs> so, um, one question I must ask is Lord Mayor of Adelaide, does that just cover Adelaide, or are you a lord over all other mayors in the state? Well, I am the Lord Mayor for the city of Adelaide which obviously the boundary is the outside of the parklands and North Adelaide as well, of course. Um, there is only one Lord Mayor. Yes. Uh, so I don't lord over the other mayors. Um, Why not? But there is only one go. Lord Mayor. And so the Lord Mayor is the mayor of a capital city. So all of the capital cities have a Lord Mayor and then all of the uh, metropolitan councils and the regional councils have mayors. And we got this lovely photograph of you in your robes. How have you? How often do you get a chance to frock up? Um, a few times a year. So I do the... Um, and all that gold, can you... Did four <laughs> yes, crumble it's, under the weight? The citizenship <laughs> ceremonies. So I only wear yeah. the original chains on very, very special occasions, uh, yeah. like, um, you know, when we're sworn in. And those chains are very heavy. They're nearly four kilos. Wow. So that on the day when we were sworn in, um, between that and the robes, after two hours, my shoulders were caning. They were just, you know, because it's a lot of weight to hold in shoulders. Yeah. Um, I have the alternate chains, which only weigh about a kilo, and so they're the ones they're the that fake. normally work. Uh, <laughs> they're just an alternate one. They're, oh, okay. they're, they're not They're not a um, replica or anything. Oh, OK. And so... Um, but, you know, of course, the original ones are 178 years old and they're yes. very fine, so uh, it's beautiful work. It is, isn't um, it? I've seen that. Yeah. We did a doco on that yeah. once. Just lovely seeing that. Because the general public probably never really get to see those things. Yeah. They don't realise the city has treasures. Yeah, absolutely. We do, actually, we've got a great archive team in there and we've been bringing all those treasures out and putting them on display. Oh, good. And uh, so, and more and more of that. So, uh, and people, there's tours all through the town yes. hall which take yeah. us into all the um, civic rooms and the chambers and, I mean, it's, it's quite funny in the chamber though, you go in and there's all these big, you know, portraits and things and, of course, they're all men, every yes. single one of them. with the side the, Yeah, the only woman in there is the Queen. And, uh, and as I was saying before, I think what you asked me, uh, I'm the third female, female Lord Mayor in 178 years and the first one this century. So is your so, picture up yet or so. is that yeah, done? <laughs> Just hold on a tick. We'll be back in a moment with the third one, but the first one this century, Lord Mayor of Adelaide, in just a moment. <laughs> Welcome back, Lord Mayor of Adelaide, Sandy Vershaw. Thank you so much for your time. That's my pleasure. Busy lady as you are. It's very nice what, to have and, Well, because she's rushing off after this. What have you... What's in your little bag of, of plans, do you think, for the future? Well, I guess um, it's... You know, the, the city is changing. It really is. And we've got a couple of really major developments that are happening. So the Central Market Arcade, That's which is yeah. going to happen in the next couple of years, yeah. and, and also 88 O'Connell Street, which is in North Adelaide. And they're really last, major catalyst last, sites. Um, and then we've got things like the smart technology rollout, so 10 Gig Adelaide, um, which is the business-to-business -business, uh, uh, connections. That'll be the fastest internet... Yep, absolutely. In the country, yep, is it also absolutely. in the world? Absolutely. Uh, I think our speeds are higher than Korea, and that's that's got the fastest wow. internet. And so, yep. um, and the businesses, and it's much cheaper too. So the businesses are doing really well. We've got about two hundred and eighty connected so far, and we've got a thousand oh, in the fantastic. pipeline. So, um, so lots of those things are changing, and of course, uh, you know, the premier and the um, the prime minister and I signed the city deal uh, in um, eight, in. 
the end of March. And uh, that's for a significant investment in Lot 14, but also some more smart technology to roll out through the city. Yeah. So, like, lots of lot things. Lot 14 is the old uh, Royal Adelaide Hospital. The old Royal Adelaide Hospital, Hospital yeah. yeah. With a space agency and yeah. the Discovery Centre, which will be amazing. So exciting. It really all is. And so there's all this... The energy in the city is fantastic mm. at the moment. And, all we can you know, say... It'll be Awesome. Amazing. It is. Well, <laughs> thank goodness you're there. <laughs> is that, is it, thank God you're here. They should make a TV show under that. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode. My absolute pleasure. It's been wonderful to see you again too. And it's been great to have your company with our Lord Mayor and we hope that at some stage, if you don't live in Adelaide, you'll come and visit Janice. Yes, take care of yourself until the next time. And keep yourself nice till then. Bye. Bye.